Hi everyone, today we'll be going over accounts October November 2021, paper 2 and question number 2. This is structured paper 2, which consists questions of 90 marks and it also has a time limit of 90 minutes. And since question number 2 is of 15 marks, we will be attempting to solve this question under 15 minutes. So without any delay, let's get started. We are given balances that have been extracted from the books of accounts of G Limited on 1st October 2020. So this is the opening date and these are the balances on this opening date. And during the year ended 30 September 2021, the following took place. So we are given further information. On 1st November 2020, there was rights issue. On 1st March 2021, there was dividend paid. And on 1st May 2021, there was bonus issue of shares. Then on 30 September 2021, there was revaluation, but this is downwards. Then we're also given the profit for the year and the 30 September 2021, which was 96,000. Now the question requires us to prepare the statement of changes in equity for the year and the 30 September 2021. All right, as we can see, we only have the opening balances for revaluation reserve and the retained earnings. So we need to figure out the opening balances for the share capital and share premium. In order to do so, we are given the closing balances for these headings. All right, first let's list down the events that should be included in the statement of changes in equity that took place in the year ended 30 September 2021. So firstly, we mentioned before while reading the information that there were right issue. So the first one would be rights issue. Then secondly, there was dividend paid. So let's write it down as well. Then we also had a bonus issue of shares. Then we had a revaluation downwards. Then the last thing to remember is that we always include the profit or loss for the year in the statement of changes in equity. And since we already know that there was profit, let's write it down as well. All right, so the easiest one is the profit for the year. We were given that the profit for the year on the 30 September 2021 was 96,000. So we just need to include this value in our statement of changes in equity. And the uh, profit is always added to the retained earnings. If it were to be loss, it should have been subtracted from the retained earnings. So let's just add the profit of 96,000. Then the total will also be 96,000. And profit will not have any effect on the share capital, share premium, and revaluation reserve. All right, then we can look at the value for revaluation downwards. On 30 September 2021, property was revalued downwards by 35,000. So if it were revaluation upwards, we would have added this value in our revaluation reserve. But since we're talking about revalued downwards, we need to subtract this value of 35,000 from the revaluation reserve. But as we can see that the opening balance is only of 28,000, so it cannot sustain a decrement of 35,000. So we can only decrease 28,000. That's the maximum value. So let's decrease the 28,000. Now, from 35,000 of the revaluation downwards, we've already deducted the 28,000 from the revaluation reserve. So the remaining balance is that of 7,000. We need to also deduct this value. So since the revaluation reserve cannot sustain the value for the remaining 7,000, we will deduct this value from the retained earnings. So we need to deduct the 7,000. This gives us the total reduction due to revaluation downwards of 35,000. Now, this revaluation downwards does not affect the share capital and share premium in any ways. Okay, then we can move towards the bonus issue. Let's read the balance. Again, the thing to remember here is that we're given the closing balance and we need to figure out the opening balance. That's why we're going in the reverse order, right? But if we were given the opening balance and we needed to figure out the closing balance, we would have gone in the proper order. But since we're given the closing value and we need to figure out the opening value, we're just doing the reverse. So firstly, that's bonus issue. We made a bonus issue of one ordinary share of dollar one each. So this will be our nominal rate. For every four shares held, the directors decided to leave the reserves in the most flexible form. All right, bonus issue is a kind of an issue where 
we do not bring in cash from any other sources. We just utilize our reserves in order to add value to our share capital. So we're given the information that we made bonus issue of one or no share for every four shares held. So I'm just going to write that information right here. So for every four ordinary shares held, they are given one bonus shares. Now first let's figure out the total number of shares at the closing date, because that's the next value right after the bonus issue, right? So the closing value is of 440,000. And since we know that the nominal rate is also dollar one, then the number of shares is just going to be 440,000 divided by the nominal rate, which is dollar one, which gives us the number of shares to be 440,000 as well. So we need to figure out the number of bonus shares in those 440,000 shares. But the thing to remember here is that those number of shares already include the bonus shares as well, right? So for every four plus one, so these are the ordinary shares and this is the bonus shares issued. For every five shares, there's going to be one bonus shares. So now we will be using the unitary method. So that will be for every one ordinary shares, there is going to be one by five bonus shares. We need to figure out for 440,000 ordinary shares. So for 440,000 ordinary shares, there's going to be one by five into 440,000 bonus shares. This gives us the total number of bonus shares to be 88,000. So this is the number of bonus shares as well as the value because bonus shares are issued at the nominal rate of one. So if you multiply the 88,000 by one, we'll get the value of 88,000 again. All right, so we can include this value for bonus issue in our share capital column. So that's going to be 88,000. But as I said before, bonus share does not include any cash ins from other sources. It utilizes the reserves of the company. So it means that we need to subtract 88,000 from the next column. So our very first reserve that we always use for bonus share is share premium. So we will be deducting the value of 88,000 from share premium. All right, so that's 88,000 minus 88,000. And bonus issue does not affect the revaluation reserve and retained earnings. So the total is just going to be zero. Now we can move towards the dividend paid. Let's have a look. Paid a dividend of 0 0.05 per share on all shares in issue at that date. So for this, we need to figure out the number of shares at the date of 1st March 2021, which we do not know now because we still have to figure out the rights issue. So let's move towards the rights issue first. We made a rights issue of one ordinary share of $1 each. So this is the nominal rate again for every 10 shares held at a premium of 20%. So we're also including premium here. It means that 20% of $1 is going to be included for the share premium. So that's just one into 0 0.20. So the value of 0 0.20 is to be included in the share premium section. And the issue was fully subscribed. Again, we will repeat the same process like this. We're given that rights issue of one ordinary share were made for every 10 shares held. So that just means for 10 ordinary shares, there was one right share. Now for the bonus share issue, we looked at the value right after the bonus issue, right? So that was given right here. But for the rights issue, we need to look at the value right after the rights issue. In order to do so, we can just deduct the bonus issue value from the closing balance in order to figure out the value right after the rights issue. So let's figure that out first. So number of shares is just going to be 440,000 minus 88,000, which gives us the value of 352,000. So now we need to figure out the rights issue out of the 352,000. And the thing to remember here is that this value of 352,000 already includes the rights issue as well. So we also need to add the rights issue to this ordinary shares. So that's just going to be 10 plus one ordinary shares. We have one right shares. Again, we will repeat the unitary method. So for every one ordinary share, there's going to be one by 11 right share. Now we need to figure out for 352,000 ordinary shares. 
so for 352,000 ordinary shares there's going to be 1 by 11 into 352,000 right shares this gives us the total right shares of 32,000 now this is the number of right shares and what we know is that there is the nominal value of 1 and we also have the premium of 0 0.20 now if you multiply 32,000 with 1 we get the value of 32,000 so that's the value we need to include in the share capital column let's do that so that's going to be 32,000 then for the share premium we need to multiply this number of shares by 0 0.20 because the premium is of 20 percent so that's just going to be 32,000 into 0 0.20, which gives the share premium amount to be 6,400. Let's include that as well. Now, rights issue does not affect revaluation reserve and retained earnings at all. So the total is just going to be 32,000 plus 6,400, which gives 38,400. All right, now let's move back to the dividend paid. So what we know is that for a dividend, we paid 0 0.05 per share on all shares in issue at that date. So we already figured out the number of shares right after the rights issue, which was 352,000. So we're just paying 0 0.05 for every of those 352,000 shares. Let's figure that out. So the value for dividend is just going to be 352,000 into 0 0.05, which gives the total dividend to be 17,600. So this is the value of the dividend that we need to include in our statement of changes in equity. And dividend is something that is distributed to the shareholders out of the retained earnings, which means that this value should be deducted from the retained earnings. Let's do that. So that's 17,600 negative value. And the total is also going to be the same. So dividend pay does not affect the share capital, share premium or revaluation reserve at all. Now we need to figure out the opening balance for the share capital. In order to do so, we can just look at this value as a balancing figure. And whenever we're trying to figure out the balancing figure, we just subtract all of the other items from the closing value. So that's just going to be 440,000 minus 88,000 minus 32,000, which gives the opening balance to be 320,000. Now we repeat the same process for share premium. We will deduct these values from the closing balance in order to figure out the opening balance. So that's just going to be 4,600 plus 88,000 because this is a negative, right? And two negatives make up a positive. So that's plus 88,000 minus 6,400, which gives the opening balance to be 86,200. Now, in order to figure out this total, we need to add these four values. So that's just going to be 320,000 plus 86,200 plus 28,000 plus 34,500 which gives the total to be 468,700. Now let's figure out the closing balance for revaluation reserve. That is just going to be 28,000 minus 28,000. So that's zero. And for retained earnings, that's going to be 34,500 minus 17,600 minus 7,000 plus 96,000, which gives the closing balance to be 105,900. Now we need to figure out the total closing balance as well. So that is just going to be 468,700 plus 38,400 minus 17,600 minus 35,000 plus 96,000, which gives a value of 550,500. Now there is another way of checking if we did the calculations correctly. Now in order to figure out this total value, we can also add these four values. So that's 440,000 plus 4,600 plus 105,900 and it also gives the total of 550,500 so it means that our statement of changes in equity is correct this concludes the first part let's move to the second one so working section was given right here instead of scribbling all over the question paper you should do all those workings in this section all right we're given the additional information the directors of g limited wish to raise 500,000 additional capital for expansion and they have identified two options to raise the full amount. So option one is to issue ordinary shares of dollar one each and option two is to issue eight person preference shares. Now we need to advise the directors which option they should choose and we need to justify our answer. So first let's have a look at what preference share is. So for preference shares, 
dividends have to be paid regardless of profit or loss so we cannot maintain our dividend according to the profit made by the company there needs to be dividend of eight percent let's write it down so for reference shares dividends have to be paid regardless of profit or loss then let's write down a point for ordinary shares so if you're issuing new ordinary shares then it can dilute the current shareholders investment right so let's write it down new ordinary shares can dilute the current shareholders investment thirdly ordinary shares have voting rights which means that it can lead to a loss of control for the current shareholders because the new ordinary shareholders will also have their own voting rights right so that can just dilute the control in the company so ordinary shares have voting rights which leads to loss of control for current shareholders all right then preference shares actually do not have any voting rights so there is no likelihood of any loss of control right so let's write that down as well preference shares do not have any voting rights so no likelihood of loss of control now we need to give the final decision based off of these points so personally i would advise the directors to choose option two which is of the eight percent preference shares because we have been earning profit of ninety six thousand, so that's more than enough to pay the preference share dividend so let's write the decision clearly the directors should choose option two all right this concludes the second part let's move to the third one we're given additional information stating that the finance director has suggested that the company could issue further debentures now we need to state two characteristics of a debenture so debenture is like a loan that has to be repaid at a certain future date and we also have to provide a fixed interest for this debenture so one main character would be fixed interest we could write it down as fixed interest rate and then another one is that these are the long-term loans so that could be another character all right so this concludes the third part as well as this question if you found this video useful make sure you like the video and leave a comment below also make sure that you're subscribed and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future thank you